Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and these are the 10 best zombies. Now, if you don't know what a zombie is, look at the screen here. Death Stalker Rexar was the first card revealed for the Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion that's coming very soon. And essentially, he is a hero card that will replace your hero, much like things we've seen before with Lord Jaraxxus. And you'll receive a new hero power called Build a Beast that allows you to craft a custom zombie beast, in which, based on some rules, you'll be able to select two beasts and merge them together into a single card, and then you'll be able to play that card using the stats, mana costs, and effects combined into one card. So, of course, there are going to be a lot of different combinations because there's so many different beasts available in the game. I thought it might be helpful to run through what I think 10 of the most powerful zombies will actually be. Now, of course, this is all speculation. The card is not out yet. We haven't seen this in practice. But based on my understanding of Hearthstone, these are the zombies I think are going to give you the most average utility. Now, keep in mind, also, I didn't just go for things like raw stats or efficiency for mana cost. I went for cards that have instant effects because I think when you play Deathstalker Rexar, it's a rather slow card in and of itself. It doesn't impact the board highly, and if you're just drawing cards that are also slow, I think that's going to lose you the game. So for the most part, I chose Zombiest Creations that are going to be able to provide an instant impact, help you swing the board, do something really significant. So cards with Charge, Battle Cries, and Taunt in particular took priority in my mind. Also, finally, keep in mind that this is a standard format list, so there are a ton of other creations available in wild format. Frankly, there's so many it's hard to even imagine all of them, so I stuck to just standard format for these top 10 creations. All of that said, let's go ahead and jump into this list of my top 10 Zom Beasts. Starting off at the number 10 spot is what happens when you combine Iron Beak Owl and Stegadon. You end up with a pretty sizable 5-7 Taunt Minion that is also able to instantly silence something. So all of the silence cards that we know now that are just universal silences like Iron Beak Owl, Spellbreaker, uh, the card Silence for Priest are very cheap cards and they don't often have a big body attached to them, Spellbreaker being the biggest body. There's also things like Defias Cleaner, but of course that's a really conditional silence, so not something we've typically seen uh, played a lot. But this looks pretty similar to Defias Cleaner, except it's universal silence and it has taunt, which is really nice, because you can deny your opponent of whatever thing they're trying to do, whether it's that Tyrion Ford Ring or that Spike Ridge Steed, and then also play a body that they have to deal with. And a 5-7 taunt is actually fairly reasonable. Of course, it's not your Ancient of War that's a 5-10 for 7, but it's getting pretty close, and since it has this active battle cry, I think this is a really strong card that can both affect your opponent's board and also set you up really nicely. And at 7 mana, you can actually create it out of your zombie zero power and play it in a single turn for 9 mana, which is a really important distinction as well. Moving on to my number 9 zombies, this is if you combine Rat Pack and Stone Tusk Boar. And the first thing I really like about this card is that it's only 4 mana. So even after you use your zombie zero power and play this, you still have some mana remaining. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in the late game when you're playing this card. But of course, it still does something instantly and in that it has charge. And the way I would envision this card having the most utility is just making a trade using it almost like a wolf rider or something where you can make a trade instantly. And if it survives, okay, cool. You've got a nice little body sitting there that's still a frustrating a card for your opponent to deal with, but if it dies, you still actually get some stats back and you get some value back. So it does a lot of different things. It's sort of like implosion almost, where you get to kill something and you summon a similar number of what would have been imps for implosion, but of course for this is going to be beasts, which is really nice for Hunter, of course, because of all the synergies. So between the low cost, between the fact that it's just nice little cheap sort of removal, you know, beast in a rocket that gets to hit something, and the fact that it gives you value back on that death rattle seems like, although this one looks sort of simple and low cost and maybe not as grand as the other cards on this list, could still be a really strong addition uh, as a play in the late game. Moving on to the number 8 spot is actually Rat Pack once again, but this time if you combine Rat Pack with Iron for Grizzly, you get this really interesting 6 mana 5-5 taunt. So a little bit like maybe Ornery Direhorn, for instance, for Warrior 
for Munguro. But of course, as soon as your opponent kills this taunt, they really haven't accomplished much because guess what? You're getting 5-5 five, five back in stats immediately. So this is a total of 10-10 in stats for 6 mana, which is ridiculous. It's taunt, which means it, it is active on the board. It forces your opponent to deal with it. And it's something they don't even feel great about killing because you're summoning so many rats on the back end. So this is a bit like maybe Sludge Belcher. Clearly not quite as defensive as Sludge Belcher because it's not summoning another taunt, but way more of a high value than Sludge Belcher. And leaving those rats behind shouldn't be underestimated because they can accomplish so much, particularly in Hunter, a class which can synergize really well with having beasts on the board, setting up those kill commands, hound masters, etc. So this just feels like a really good mid-range minion that combos nicely with your hero power and still reserves a couple, a couple points of mana to do whatever other thing you might be looking to do. Moving on to my number 7 spot is a Zombies that combines King Mukla and Stone Tusk Boar. Once again, that really cheap charge effect coming in big with these Zombies. This is a 4 mana 6-6 six, six with charge, guys. So move out of the way, 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. This card is so much better. It's Leroy Jenkins' charge damage levels, right? 6 damage, but it's got 4 additional stats as well, so it's really hard to kill. So not only... Do you get a two mana, or excuse me, a one mana cheaper charge? You get extra stats, so it's st still sticking around. It can make trades, you can go face, whatever you need it to do. And the downside, arguably, is even better than Leroy Jenkins' downside, because giving your opponent two, bana two bananas is strong, but it's about the same as summoning two one ones, and they actually have to wait a turn to use those bananas usually very effectively, especially if this is trading into minions on the board. So, since this is such at a low cost, very, very flexible alongside your hero power, leaving you four mana remaining to use that kill command or hound master or whatever else. Since it can just do a couple different things, whether it's trade or just go face for tons of damage, which Hunter is often also want to do. And the fact that the downside here is really not that big and there's just so many stats bundled into this card, it seems kind of bonkers ridiculous to me. This one is just so oppressively good. Moving on to the number six spot, we have an interesting one. This is when you combine Tundra Rhino and Young Dragonhawk. And in many ways, it's kind of similar to the last card because it's six charging damage and it has six health. But of course, the upside here, as it always is with Tundra Rhino, is that all your other beasts also have charge. So this is that Tundra Rhino that's just a little bit harder to kill, can instantly trade into multiple things, which is really nice. I think it's a strong defensive play. It can trade into a couple smaller minions, still sticks around, maybe it doesn't die right away, and it still has all that potential upside that Tundra Rhino has. So uh, it's better itself thanks to that one fury effect and still has all that crazy power potential of the all your beasts have charge effect, making it a really deadly combination that if your opponent doesn't kill immediately, they probably just lose the game, much like Tundra Rhino today but it's even better. Up next to the number five spot is the zombies you get when you combine Scavenging Hyena and Jungle Panther. We all know how scary Scavenging Hyenas can be. If you stick those on the board and a couple beasts die, guess what? You're probably going to lose the game because there's a giant Scavenging Hyena that you just don't have an answer for. Now, this one's a little bit different because not only does it have extra stats, it also gets stealth, so it's very unlikely your opponent could ever kill this unless they have exactly a flame strike or some sort of uh, big AoE effect that can kill, kill this from stealth. That means there's a very, very good chance this is going to live and you're going to be able to start getting value, particularly when you get a cheap charging zombies you can kill the following turn and just start buffing this guy up instantly. Uh, it quickly becomes a 7, 5, and 8, or a 9, 6, etc. It's going to steamroll really, really quickly and become a monster minion for only 5 mana. Now, this is one of the minions on this list that's a little bit slower than the rest. In other words, this is probably not something you can play when you're really far behind on the board. This is the kind of zombies that's probably going to get better after you've stabilized with your zombies a little bit and you're suddenly looking for win conditions instead of stabilization conditions. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But clearly this is the kind of card that can do absurd things if it sticks and you're able to just keep powering it out over a few turns and killing beasts along the way. Particularly with all those rat packs and all those other small little tokens you're generating. Uh, this guy is going to give you enough damage and a big enough body to win the game. And all for only 5 mana, which is really nice. At the number 4 spot is the Zombies that combines Dispatch Kodo with Stubborn Gastropod, resulting in a 6 mana minion that is a 3-6 taunt, which is already 
fairly cool. I mean, not the best stats for six mana, but if you compare it to something like Warriors, uh, Direhorn Hatchling, looks like a fairly similar five mana, three six, some sort of really powerful effect. In this case, it has Poisonous, uh, which typically wouldn't matter a ton as far as um, you know a three six taunt is concerned. But of course, it is going to trade up into anything that kills it. So that six six minion that trades in is still dying, unlike Direhorn Hatchling, which is nice. But the real upside here is combining that poisonous effect with the battle cry effect of Dispatch Kodo, because anytime a minion with poisonous does damage, it's an instant kill. So this isn't just a deal damage of three. If you use it on a minion, it's also just a kill this minion, assuming it doesn't have Divine Shield or you know death rattle or whatever else you're going to just completely deal with that minion with this poisonous damage battle cry much like you've seen if you give poisonous to um a wild pyromancer and it, and it, it goes off with like adapt from a paladin that poisonous effect as long as the damage is done by a minion will kill every other minion the same thing applies here so this is the ultimate fire elemental it's not just deal three damage it's just kill a minion with that battle cry which is nice uh, also, of course, the flexibility of just being able to do three damage to face is nice because it does start to look a little bit like Fire Elemental's um, Battle Cry if you don't use it on a minion and you just use it on face as well. So a ton of flexibility here. Nice defensive taunt body. Fantastic removal. It's sort of the um, better version of Vile Spine Slayer, if you will, with this Battle Cry. So a lot of different things that this card can do really, really well, and that's why it ranks so high on this list. Moving on to the number three spot is a very terrifying combination. It's Bitter Tide Hydra and Stone Tusk Boar. You can see once again the Stone Tusk Boar is pretty much an MVP of the zombies here. This is a six mana 9-9 nine, nine with charge. That is absolutely crazy. This is the better, cheaper King Crush. Now clearly it still has Bitter Tide Hydra's downside, but as we've seen time and time again, that doesn't stop the card from being played in decks that are looking to win the game. And this is a kind of card that can win the game even faster. Because sometimes your opponent's just going to have 9 health and you can just kill them instantly with this ridiculously efficient high damage charging minion. It's better than Leroy Jenkins, of course, for only 1 mana more. You're getting 3 damage and 7 extra health, which is totally absurd. So this is the kind of thing that, sure, you could trade if you needed to in desperation play, but also just playing a 9 mana, a nine attack minion that goes face and sticks around and your opponent has to deal with this giant threat <clears throat> might be enough on its own to just cement a game and bring you to victory. So uh, this just giant of a body, a, a literal giant, bigger than most of the giants in the game, in fact, that can just go face right away is very, very scary indeed. Moving on to the number two spot is the card you get when you combine Stampeding Kodo with Iron Fur Grizzly. And this is the only eight mana card on the list, which is actually really important. Uh, a lot of the eight mana creations you can make don't turn out to be that good. But eight mana is a sort of magic number, assuming you're on turn 10, you use your zombie zero power, you have exactly eight mana remaining. So sometimes those six mana, seven mana cards, while really good and still really powerful, don't always give you the flexibility to slot in another card because there might just not be enough one or two mana cards. But when you create an eight mana zombie so like this one, you know your mana is going to line up perfectly, which is pretty nice because you're getting the max impact for every mana you spend in that given turn. And this card, of course, is just a really big dude. First off, it's a 6-8 taunt. So very difficult to deal with. It's a bog creeper already, basically. For only one extra mana and that in and of itself can't be underestimated that's just a tough thing for opponents to deal with but this battle cry on top of that fact that you also get stampeding kodos instant murder of any two or less attack minion makes this a very powerful swing kind of card we've all seen how often stampeding kodos can hit and this is the kind of thing you can point yourself to when you're building a zombie and say okay i know they have a two attack minion out there there's that alley armor smith i need to kill so let's try to hit stampeding kodo you hit that stampeding kodo and then you're like oh my gosh this iron fern grizzly on top of this this guy's just going to be a monster to deal with so you get a huge swing you kill something very significant on your opponent's side or frankly even if you just kill a totem it's still a nice little swing potential and you're still getting that giant bog creeper body as well so a lot about this card to like. The fact that it has taunt means it's a great lifesaver in the late game. You're not risking your entire zombies turn just to die to a wave of opponent's minions. So you're going to stabilize. 
Nice defensive tool. Big swing potential. Of course, it's also a beast like every zombie, so crazy synergy options there as well. I just think this one packs so much punch into a single card. Clearly, the cost represents that, but it works so darn nicely. And then finally, for the number one zombies, this really shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody who's thought about this one too much. I think it's almost undebatable that when you combine Vicious Fledgling with Stone Tusk Boar for only four mana, you have a pretty ridiculous minion that can really snowball out of control incredibly quickly. We all know that any time that Vicious Fledgling sticks on the board and is able to hit face, it probably means you're going to win the game. It just it just spirals into crazy plays so quickly. It gives it stealth so you can't kill it. You get the Wind Fury, of course, as the high roll, and you just start adding stats. And the longer it's there, the more often it gets to attack, the less likely your opponent is going to find an answer, and it's just it's going to go nuts, and they'll never win the game. So when you give Vicious Fledgling charge, guess what? That's all happening a turn sooner. They don't even have time to think about answering it. Not to mention, of course, it's also just starting out as a higher health card, so it's already dead to less things like frost bolts and so on and so forth, just can't kill it. So suddenly you've got that uh, Wind Furied Vicious Fledgling right off the bat. It's already got a plus one, plus one buff, and it's just going to snowball out of control even faster and even scarier. Not to mention that when you create this zombies with your hero power at 10 mana, you've still got four mana remaining, so you can still do other things. You can hound master it along the way and have a 6-6 six, six charging vicious fledgling in a single turn. How absolutely bonkers, ridiculously scary is that? And suddenly you realize that maybe zombies is just good enough and is quite fast enough to stabilize and recover a board in the hunter's favor and maybe maybe after all deathstalker rexar is going to be a halfway decent card because i think it's undeniable this is the best zombies among many very powerful zombies creations and there you have it that's my list of the 10 best zombies i'm really curious what you guys think did i get the list right did i get some stuff out of order what do you think the most powerful zombies are going to be there's so many different combinations so many permutations of different zombies. I'm sure I missed something awesome. So I'd love to hear your take on this. What's going to be the most powerful one? What do you think makes the most sense for Deathstalker Rexar to create in the environment where you've already played the card? Don't go and tell me that this one has the best stats per mana cost, that kind of stuff. We need active cards that are going to help keep you alive and help you win the game once you've played Deathstalker Rexar. So don't just think about these in a vacuum. Think about them in the context of an actual game. And if you do that, I think you're going to still come up with some really cool ideas that I'd like to hear. So, of course, leave those in the comments below. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.